Hey guys! So, if you've been watching my other videos, I posted one a few days ago about the kingdom of God and what Jesus meant by saying that he was bringing the kingdom of God. And so, today I wanted to dive in a little bit into what it looks like to represent Christ and to be part of his kingdom. And it's really quite simple. Jesus sums up everything that we need to do. He says that people will know that you are my followers by the way that you love one another. Jesus says in the Gospels that all the laws in the Old Testament can be summed up in simply love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Paul says in Romans 13, he's basically summing up what Christ said and said, in verse 8, owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. If you love people, you've done everything that the Bible says to do. Love should always be the underlying motivation. So, and here's the thing. <clears throat> when you love God, you truly, truly love him, then showing love to people shouldn't be that hard because guess what? Everyone is made in God's image. And so when you love another, you are honoring them as being an image bearer of God, which is pretty profound. And in 1 John 3, 18, we're told, my children, our love should not just be works and talk. It must be true love, which shows itself in action. Love is not a passive thing. It requires that we do something. And so... I've actually been reading through the book of Romans for the last um, couple mornings and perfect timing because in Romans chapter 12, Paul actually gives some really great details, some ways to show that you are a true Christian, to show your love for God and to show your love for one another. And so I'm going to keep this short and simple and I'm just going to read to you what Paul says. So I might kind of um, paraphrase a little bit, but um, here's what he says in Romans 12. 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. That means hate what is evil. Hate what is bad. Hold fast to what is good. Don't let go of it. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. It should be like a competition to see who can love the other person better. It's kind of fun. Do not be slothful in zeal. That means don't be like lazy, basically, but be fervent in spirit, be passionate, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation. That means be patient when things are hard. Be patient when there's a nasty virus in the world. Rejoice in hope. Okay, be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. That's like other believers, people in your community, and seek to show hospitality. Basically, be generous. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. That means if somebody is being mean to you, don't be mean back. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. That means don't be so prideful that you won't hang out with the person in your class or in your community that you think isn't as cool as everyone else. Hang out with them. Never be wise in your own sight. Don't ever think that you know better. I mean, you might, but don't be, don't be haughty about it. That means don't be prideful. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Okay, that goes back to not repaying evil with evil. God's got your back. All you have to do is love through it. And it's tough. Don't get me wrong. But it's what we're told to do, and it'll go well with you if you do. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Which I think is kind of funny imagery. That it's actually more harmful 
to your enemy to love them than it would be to repay evil. And so it's kind of almost like we're being given it out a little bit here because by loving people when they're not expecting us to, we're kind of disappointing them. But you know what? You're actually helping them. You're pointing them to Christ and to God by representing that kind of love. And who knows? You might actually radically change them and you might kind of make them stop and think about the way that they're acting and maybe even convince them through your actions to stop being a bully. There's a reason and a rationale behind why God tells us to handle things like this. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I know that that's really hard. I think that a lot of times our flesh wants to get angry and it wants to lash out. But guys, representing Christ, reflecting him, since you too are an image bearer of God, being a member of this kingdom of God means choosing love even when it might be hard. So I want you to keep that in mind. Let that be your guide when you're choosing a reaction, choosing something to say. Think, pause. Am I showing love by doing this? Am I being obedient to what God said? Think about it. And if maybe the action that you are considering taking isn't loving, stop and think about a better way to show love to people. Okay? When you do, I promise that in the long run, you're going to feel a lot better. And you're going to help the people around you feel better too. Showing love is always the best option. So choose love. Choose to be kind. Choose to reflect God's goodness and to reflect his love by loving people. In doing so, you're going to show him great love too. So have a great day, guys.